Hey, DP Review TV viewers, Alex Mitchell from DCPI Film Services here with an update on the big camera preamp shootout that we had a couple of days ago. Now, a lot of you have had really great feedback and a lot of questions about our workflow, and also just wanted an update about the really bizarre sound that we had on the A7 Mark III. You can help yourself and your loved ones stay healthy by washing your hands often. And I'm here to tell you that I actually did get my hands on another A7 Mark III body and I have some good news and I have some bad news. Now, I'll get the bad news out of the way first. Unfortunately, the camera did perform the same with both tests. So each body that I tried with the gear that I used actually had the same results. And I tried different versions of the exact same gear that I had. So on both cameras, I was trying the URX100 receiver and it was giving me the same problem. After handling pet food or pet treats and after touching garbage, the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus actually exhibits the exact same issue. What I've also found though is that other pieces of equipment don't exhibit this problem. Some of you have seen Gerald Undone's video, the Rode VideoMic NTG seems to have no problem. And my Rode Video Wireless Go actually seems to be fine as well. You can help yourself and your loved ones stay healthy by washing your hands often, especially during these key times when you are likely to get and spread germs. So it doesn't really seem to be responding to a particular price tier of gear and you know different manufacturers are also having the same problem. So I've reached out to several manufacturers like Zaxcom and Rode and no one's really able to tell me kind of what the commonality between the problematic pieces of gear might be. So I guess the takeaway from this is that if you are using particular pieces of audio equipment and you're thinking about buying an A7 III, go to your camera store if you can and bring your headphones, test it out, see what it sounds like, because you may find it works perfectly fine, but you also might find that it doesn't work very well. So I'm sure a lot of you out there are probably wondering, under ideal conditions, how does the camera now compare to the other cameras in that lineup? And there are some interesting results. So in first place, still gonna give it to the Canon. Even with ideal conditions, I still think it performs the best at any of the cameras that we tested. Um, in second place though, it's still gonna be a two-way tie, but the Sony has bumped the Nikon. And the reason for that is the Sony's kind of the mirror image of the Panasonic, whereas they both perform fairly well at ideal conditions. Um, I found that the boosted levels in the Sony didn't really perform as well as boosting a signal from the Panasonic. I had a very weird sort of like almost a steam engine, like hiss on, hiss off again kind of performance. You can help yourself and your loved ones stay healthy by washing your hands often, especially during these key times. Whereas I found that the Sony actually handled the hot levels a lot better than the Panasonic handed those. You can help yourself and your loved ones stay healthy by washing your hands often, especially during these key times. So your preference for the Panasonic or the Sony is really gonna depend on how you work. If you're more concerned about protecting hot levels, then the Panasonic is not gonna be the go-to, the Sony is gonna be the choice. But if you normally like to keep your levels pretty low and then boost in post so that you can really preserve any hot signals that might show up without your foreknowledge, then the Panasonic is gonna be a better choice for you. Whereas everything that follows from the Sony and the Panasonic is still roughly in the same order. It's gonna be Nikon in third place, then Fuji in fourth place, and last place Olympus. Now again, I just wanna reiterate that all of these cameras under ideal conditions are actually pretty usable, especially with the knowledge that we have now. So don't be offended if your camera didn't get in the second and third place. They're all pretty good. So my conclusion from retesting the A7 Mark III is it actually performs very well under ideal conditions, but if I was the sort of videographer who had to go into environments and work with audio gear that I wasn't able to test beforehand, might be something that I would want to know. If you're the kind of videographer who works with the same audio kit all the time, just be sure to test and make sure that your setup works with that particular camera. But if you have to be run and gun and all over the place, it might be something that you want to consider about your A7 Mark III purchase. Big thanks to Alex for helping us retest the Sony a7 III. And we have seen a ton of feedback from that preamp test, and there's some more tests we want to run. We have seen some really inconsistent results from the Nikon Z6. We'll be looking into that shortly. And there's some other cameras people really want us to test, like the EOS R, the Panasonic GH5. We'll be looking at those in the future as well. So make sure you subscribe to see that. Don't forget to also follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, and we will see you all again very soon.